um, today I'm in Gaberon, uh, Botswana. Uh, I'm here for my grandfather's funeral. Uh, we laid him to rest on Sunday, according to the cultural norms in Botswana. So I landed in Botswana on Friday, on Saturday, Friday. Yeah, on Friday. And then uh, Saturday, I had to drive to uh, Francis Town because my mom's home village is next to Francis Town. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just trying. I'm holding, I don't have my tea, my uh, camera stand. So I am holding the camera and I'm recording myself. So what happens is... Um, when uh when someone dies in Botswana, they follow cultural norms there are so many cultural cultures in Botswana and uh my mom is originally from Botswana and my father like i always tell you my father is from zimbabwe so i'm a mixture of half zimbabwean and half Botswana, half Botswana. okay so um, i arrived in Botswana via from south africa via um, uh, Cesar Reza Kama International Airport. It's a very beautiful uh, airport in Botswana. It's called Cesar Reza Kama International Airport. I landed very well and it was very nice. When you land in Botswana, the government of Botswana is taking strict measures uh, for COVID. Like right now, my mask is in front of me, but because I'm recording outdoors and there is no other guest of the hotel I'm staying, that is here. So that's why I can do this live without a mask. But the government is very strict in terms of um, COVID measurements and COVID preventative measurements so yes just to let you know so when i land in botswana um uh, Kama International Airport. Uh, first thing you do before even passing through the immigration is to go for your COVID test, submit your passport, submit uh, your COVID test from the country you are coming from. So as you know, these days, if you're traveling, international traveling, you need your COVID test. So I had done my COVID test in Cape Town before flying over to uh, Johannesburg. And uh, when I get to Johannesburg, my COVID test was still valid because I had to sleep over at the hotel at the airport because I was flying over in the morning all the way to Botswana. So in the morning, I took the flight from uh, Johannesburg, South Africa to Botswana. I arrived early morning around 25, 25 minutes past 7 a.m. And uh, when you arrive, you're shown um, all the way. It was like a private jet. It was just the two of us. So yay! Have the first experience of just flying two people in a plane. It was very nice. It was very comforting. It was very comfortable just having that exposure of just you and the other person, the pilots and uh, um, the air hostess, one air hostess, just talking to you, serving you. It was very, very nice. We were allowed to eat in that flight, private flying. It was very nice. So, yeah, guys, that was a good experience for me for the first time. Just have to be in a plane with just two people with an air hostess. Obviously, and the pilots are... Um, yeah so yes when we arrived it was just the two of us there was no congestion at the airport uh, it's a very nice big quiet uh and you know you the moment you get into the mother city my mother i call it my motherland it's calm it's calm it's peaceful it's relaxing ah that's all about Botswana. like as you can see in my background i'm just sitting in a um, like a bus to outdoors uh the hotel that i'm staying so it's very peaceful it's very uh calm um yeah sorry i do not have makeup on so yeah it was very nice and then uh we had to go we directed to do our covid uh for checking like our checkpoint uh at the at the, at the airport we got there they did uh the, we, they asked for your passport they asked for your covid test from the country you're coming from obvious they will see in your passport if you're a resident like me i was coming from south africa so they want to know if you're a resident in south africa or if you're coming from another country and they could see i'm a resident in south africa but i'm originally from zimbabwe and um yeah I was in um, uh, Gaborone. They asked you why you're in Botswana. I told them I'm here for my Tatum Holo funeral, and they were just laughing like, Really, you really look like a Botswana child. You are our child. They were very welcoming to me. They were very, like, really, really comforting to me. And because I also understand the language, uh, the Swan language, uh, and the Kalanga as well. So it was much easier for me, guys. But they will still communicate, if you visit Botswana, they will communicate with you in English. And the other gentleman that I flew with in the private jet was also uh, from the local, a uh, local person traveling from South Africa. So it was just the two of us, it was very nice. And then uh, after taking my stuff, they gave me, you're giving like uh, the testing kit for your COVID. Uh, and then you go to the next room where you do your COVID test, the nose guys, you know how it is. Those that have been traveling uh, international, you know how it is, the COVID test. And then, yeah. I'm scared of the COVID test, guys. It's not comfortable. It's not so. It's not painful, but it's just not comfortable. It's one of those things that, given an opportunity, you do your best to avoid. But anyway, girl got to do what girl got to do. So I got to the uh, testing room. The nurse was very nice, comforting, and I was very comfortable. And then she did the COVID test in my nose. 
And then she told me to wait outside for the t uh, results to come. And uh, then the nice chairs, nice lounge for you to sit down. And yeah, I had to sit down. Um, I remember I didn't have a SIM card to communicate with my family that I've landed, but I'd organized everything because I was going to hire a car in Gaborón. So yeah, I sat outside waiting for my results, wait for some minutes, some time, and then they call you, the results are out, uh, you are COVID negative. If you are COVID positive, I don't know what they will do, whether they will return you back or what, I'm not so sure. But for me, I was COVID negative, so I had to proceed. They direct you to uh, immigration. So I took down the stairs because where we do the uh, COVID test is upstairs then i went down i uh, went to immigration got to immigration uh, it was quite nice um it was quite nice um and then um went to immigration it was two in the morning uh they checked my passport office they check where you're coming from they ask you what are you here for again i explained to them they welcomed me to the country stamped my passport gave me back my passport and my covid test so with botswana the moment you do a covid uh test they will give you a covid um kind of a card uh, let me see if I've got it here or I'll show you on another video. They'll give you a COVID card which says that you have arrived uh, with which border or which airport and then you get your COVID test. Uh, here I've got my COVID test. So I'm going to show you my COVID uh, card which I got when I landed. So yeah guys, this is my COVID card. Um, you can see my details here. This is the COVID card I got um, with the details. Uh, yeah. So this is Botswana. They are well organized in terms of COVID awareness. They are well organized in, COVID, in terms of COVID uh, measurements and um, preventative measurements. So yeah, then I entered the country. I was co collected my bags and here yeah, I was. Welcome to Botswana. I'm in Botswana. Had my breakfast at the airport because when I left, still we got food in the plane, but still I really wanted like a real, real Botswana breakfast. Okay. But anyway, then I had to go do my uh, car collection at Heads, Botswana. They were very nice. They were very friendly, but don't expect to get the fancy, fancy cars. Uh, they had nice cars, but all their cars that they had like were like, yeah, not the latest models. But yeah, I think you had an option. There are so many car rentals that are there at the airport. You can either book in advance. We had booked in advance my, the car that I was going to use, but we had to pay and submit our driver's license. They need your driver's license. Like, um, yeah, they check. Is it international? Like, can you, can you drive in Botswana? Do you... Um, like some countries have, have got driver's license that are strictly specific for that country. And then some driver's license like mine, I can drive anywhere in the world. So yeah, you need to be aware of that as well before you travel or before you think of hiring a car, what type of a driver's license you have. And then, yeah, they, you do the process with the car, rental people, then they go check the car that you want, uh, inspect it, you know, the whole thing about hiring a car, do your inspections, see everything, the meter reading and everything before they give you the cars and uh, if you're booked a navigator, and the other thing when you arrive in Botswana with these COVID measurements, there is another thing that they tell, they call a travel permit. Like for me, I was going to travel from Gaborone to Francistown, which is another city or like another province. So I needed to have a travel permit to go to that side. So I had to buy my SIM card at the airport as well uh, with Mascom uh, from uh, yeah, Mascom Masiwa Communications, uh, the owner's tribe Masiwa from Zimbabwe. So I bought my SIM card from there. Yeah, another Zimbabwe in Botswana. So we got the Zimbabwe. Uh, the Mascom SIM card and my put in my phone, got connected, bought airtime, communicated with my family. I've landed in Botswana and yeah, I gave my sister my number, my passport details. She says, Don't worry, uh, I'm gonna do the payment for you. So I sent everything to my sister. She was in my Sunga, no, 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 she was at um. Bait Bridge border post collecting my mom because my mom traveled by road. It was actually quicker for and anyway, it was actually quicker for her and she really wanted to travel that route because she does not have to drive uh to go by road all the way, like to use a public transport all the way to Francistown or to her home in Tutume because her sister or my sister always wait for her at the border. So the moment she gets to Blawayo, they always wait for her. They collect her from there and then they take her home to have a rest, take a shower. So it's close by. So for her, she loves seeing her sister before traveling home. So they were going to travel together. So yeah, that was my, my sister was there and then my uncle's children were still here and the rest of the family had already traveled to Francistown close to where my mom's home village is. So yeah, after getting my travel permit, I traveled to the hotel that I was going to sleep over because I was waiting for my partner to arrive the following day. We had different flights. So yeah, that was it. I went to the hotel, very welcoming. It was very nice. It's called Town Lodge. It's near um, 
it's it's called the area is called Junction. Um, airport junction okay it's called airport junction it's a very nice uh it's simple the rooms are very small they're not they're small spacious and comfortable so it's not like um a big hotel a five-star hotel maybe for me i can give it a four star because it does qualify some hotels that i've seen internationally they are big and all that but they do not have the standard this one have it's small the rooms are small but very spacious very neaty for someone that work and travel like me you've got a nice desk small tv it was okay for me it's okay maybe because i'm not a fancy person but it was okay it, it is okay for me so yeah then i checked in i paid yeah so accommodation uh to be honest with you accommodation in botswana is very very expensive there are so many hotels around the airport or near the airport or in the city center but it's very very pricey uh it comes up to two thousand pula a day and remember me i'm coming from south africa which means the pula is stronger than the rand so whatever conversion you are going to do you're going to be paying more compared it was rand so this one was like uh 800 i think 800 puller 790 puller one night because i just needed a one night because to the following morning i was traveling to francis town so it was like 790 puller oh yeah girl yeah so to me it was pricey because yeah I'm a finance person and I'm always cautious of my budget and my spending and I knew I was going to be in the country for quite some time. I'm one person that is when I'm in the city and I don't want to stay with family, not because I don't want a family to stay with family because it's not nice. It is nice guys. I've got family all over Gaberon. They've got nice houses, beautiful houses, beautiful houses, but I'm just that kind of a person. I need my space, you know, when you're used to having your own space. So even when you travel, you really need your space. I visit my family in Gaberon. I visit my family all over, but at the end of the day i need to sleep like in my like in my own space so yeah guys uh that was it uh then i slept over very nice i really realized i actually arrived in the morning like i told you so i had the whole afternoon to rest because uh i arrived late in, in johannesburg and i slept late again because i was communicating finishing up my work because it came the trip wasn't planned so i had to adjust my work adjust everything my schedule and everything so yeah really really um I had a lot of pressure from my side, a lot of pressure with kids sorting my babies back home in Cape Town and everything else. So it was quite a challenge. But I thank God um, I'm here today and I'm talking about it. I'm doing a live. I really would love to do a live, you know, as me as usual. I really would love to do a live before leaving. I would love to do a live before traveling. I would have loved to do a live at Oaro Town. I would have loved to do a live at uh, Ceseretse Cam International Airport. But because... It was a bit of a challenge. Uh, it was hectic traveling. So, yes, guys. Uh, Saturday morning, I had to fetch my partner from the airport. He arrived around 10 a.m. Uh, just have to check if he was happy and comfortable with the car. And I had to register him as the second driver as well of the car. Because just in case I wasn't so sure and confident if I was able to drive to and back and following the protocol that the person that is registered on a car is the only person that can drive. So you pay an extra amount like 500 puller to aid him as the additional driver and for insurance purposes. So the car had two drivers, me and him. And because he had traveled also for somewhere from far away, far away, I can't explain exactly, like disclose the details. I had to be like driving because I understand he was very tired because he did like two international, like three international flights before reaching Botswana. So I really felt for him. He was very tired. Tired. but anyway i appreciated it accompanied me i was so grateful always grateful and forever grateful for him to come and be with me in a difficult time with my family and everything guys so yeah thank you babe for being with me yeah shout out to him guys so yeah that was the trip and uh that was what was happening uh and then we had to drive so we just talked we, we, uh, it was like can we eat it was like no i had breakfast it's like okay can we drive it's like yeah let's go so yeah, from the airport junction, the nicest thing about staying at this uh, lodge uh, called Town Town Lodge, yeah, is that it's close to the highway. So it's just next to the highway. So it was difficult for us. We didn't have to use a navigator. That highway was going to take us all the way to Francis Town. So yeah, we got into the car and then we drove all the way to Francis Town. I was driving, guys. And I broke a record for myself. I drove like almost like 400, 450 kilometers 
into Francis Town from Gaberon. Myself, we only had one stop. Ooh, that was my longest drive, guys. I was so happy. I'm so comfortable. Now I'm so confident I can drive that far. Yeah, alone without being changed. So I was so confident and I really wanted to do it. Well, and the, there was heavy traffic. And funny thing, guys. I saw it was a two-way traffic and much of the cars that were driving or overtaking me or that I was overtaking, most of the cars were my family members' cars. And just because we didn't know who was in, who's, in which car, we didn't know it was like us. So only when the cars were parked warm, that's when we realized, ah, some of these cars overtook us on the way. That was on Sunday at my grandfather's funeral. So yeah, I was driving with my family all the way to Francistown. And then we got to Francistown because I wasn't so sure until it was very late. Around 6 p.m. we left uh, Gar Boron around 1 p.m. Around 6 p.m. then we had to do... Um, stop over in francis town call my sister she was always and the family was checking on us where are you uh, don't you need someone to, to fetch you so yeah my sister was waiting for us in francis town and then uh yeah we, we she had to lead us and then we drive all the way to tutume uh we got to tutume around past nine yeah because we did well we had supper we had supper with my sister in francis town because remember we'd skipped lunch so we really were hungry we had supper in francis town and we drove to tutume and um when we go to tutume that's when we 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 were to go and pass our condolences to the family uh the ones that were still awake and yeah we're so tired and you know they're following covid protocols so we had to check into where to another lodge there that we had booked uh so we got there uh we checked in um yeah it was a very nice simple lodge there are so many nice lodges so tutume is like a village but it's not a real village so all the villages in botswana they're not they are villages but they are not like uh, traditional villages where there's no electricity there is no tapped water there is electricity the lights are they've got street lights they've got everything so it really looked like a city and my partner was like wow you say the village i was expecting a village where there are no lights but in tutume there are lights there is everything so we arrived we slept over in tutume and then because of my mom's cultural um my mom's culture uh, body viewing is done at 5 a.m. So we woke up at 4 a.m., bath and everything. 5 a.m., we were home to do the funeral service for my grandfather. Body viewing, we did, we did it at 5 a.m. That's the culture there. And we have to bury him early in the morning. So, you know, the whole funeral procession was done from 5 a.m. body viewing up to around, I think, half past six early in the morning and it was freezing cold and i did not carry because the boots that i carried were like brown boots and the, i was wearing black so i ended up dressed up in black black and white and brown boots because it was very very cold i i thought Botswana is a desert in the morning i forgot in the morning it, the temperatures drop it was very cold in the morning but in the evening uh it's also very cold but during the day it's very very hot like desert hot so yeah guys that was it uh, we did the funeral procession of my grandfather it was very sad it was very emotional uh we had to cross limpo um Chitume river uh, it's a big river but like i always say botswana is a desert it flooded like three months ago my family was telling me the river is full and i saw the pictures but now i just arrived the river is like a desert it's a dry 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 but there were there was a cyclone this year which damaged a lot of damaged a lot of bridges uh so yeah guys that was it we went to bury my grandfather over the river we crossed over the river we buried my grandfather we did the traditional ceremony of burying uh, an old person unfortunately i couldn't do a live i couldn't record anything because the phones are not allowed at funerals even a tone even a ringing even a beeping is not allowed even pictures so i could not take pictures uh, during the funeral procession or at the gravesite or anywhere so the funeral was done so yeah this tradition and because we are christians we prayed but it's still traditional culture has to be done like there are some elderly women things that elderly women have to do i was seeing it also for the first time because yeah i missed like some of the funerals i would go after so i did not see so to this time was also an opportunity for me to learn my mother's culture deep of it and seeing everything live but unfortunately i couldn't record it for my siblings or anyone else because of the culture and i respect my mom's culture so we were done burying my mom by the time the sun was coming out we were already done yeah that's how it's done in Botswana. it was done and we had to go to the home back home and then we do like um family meetings and according to the culture the clothes were supposed to be distributed like his late um what like whatever he left has to be distributed in front of the family we had to do it um 
after six months but my grandfather before he died he requested he didn't want to follow the tradition of it so yeah the family had to discuss and both parties the christians the traditionals they have to discuss and understand the views of the late uh, my grandfather what he wanted so everything has to be distributed and shared there yeah i was sad because i couldn't get his rifle i wanted to pick his rifle but i couldn't because um someone took it and um at the time of the distribution of the property we couldn't find the rifle the rifle guys is valued at 45,000 puller right now so i'm still looking for the rifle guys as soon as i got the rifle i'll all notify you guys that i finally got my grandfather rifle that because everyone wants it so i'm not so sure if i'm gonna get it because everyone wants the rifle guys obvious because of his value because of the treasure anyway guys so yeah i ended up getting what did i got i ended up getting a gown it's it's a culture he was a man in my shona culture like my father's shona culture men's stuff are taken by men women's stuff are taken by women but in botswana everyone has to take including everyone in the village so the family selects whatever you want first you have to pick because it's our grandfather so i was one of the grandchildren i had to select one or two things that i wanted so i picked a gown for my grandfather and then i picked um yeah and then my other aunt picked shoes for me so yeah i don't know they just assumed i fit so culturally i have to wear those things because they are my late grandfather stuff so i got those things and then my mom picked for my brother yes father Chirenge picked him a stick uh, that my grandfather was using a wooden stick because we know he's fond of sticks and yeah everyone picked stuff and everyone picked stuff and then when the family was done everyone that attended the funeral had to pick whatever they want also everything is put outside and you pick after that you are served with snacks um like uh, when you arrive at the funeral at our family gate you had to do temperature check in and you had to wash your hands sanitize temperature check recorded as the data is needed and they were monitoring the number of people and social distancing and everything. So all the snakes were pre-pegged, wrapped around, but they washed everyone's hands, sanitizers were all over. Everything was done. The protocols were followed, guys. We got snakes. It said that you wanted to eat there or you wanted to go. And then if you wanted coffee, tea or whatever, because it was still early morning, me and my partner and, and my family members, some of them, we had coffee, tea and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, then we had to do our family meetings according to tradition everyone has to be there we have to do introductions because our family is so big and it hasn't been long people have gathered so we had to do introductions and everything and meet and talk which we did and then after that was done and then we had to have lunch a traditional lunch which was a pup and uh batsana beef the way they make it uh it was very nice um yeah strange for my partner but yeah i enjoyed it um i enjoyed it uh, i'm used to the food anyway i enjoyed it i loved it i was actually looking for pounded beef because they're very famous they make nice pounded beef guys but yeah i couldn't have the pounded beef so uh forgive me i'm just going to take a walk now so yeah that was it um and then we we after having lunch uh, then it was time for me to visit the homes my family homes we've got like so many homes like the whole yard for us so yeah okay i want to show you this background so yeah then after having the lunch we had everything it was very nice guys it was really really cool it was really really nice i enjoyed it i loved it um meeting my family members seeing my siblings so it's like in my family uh, among my mother's brothers and sisters each one whether they're like my mom is based in zimbabwe or my siblings have got a twin like you have got someone that looks like you in botswana so i meet my twin people someone that look exactly the way i look guys exactly from the eyes from the teeth the way i smile everything so i've got a twin not only one i've got twins uh in botswana people that look exactly like me but we've got different names so yeah it was very nice bonding we took a lot of pictures uh yeah and then we had fun we talk we laughed and yeah we reunited and we followed the same protocol but now guys uh like now um uh, then i had to visit my families around again and friends as well in botswana went to masunga went to domboshaba there's a place called domboshaba in masunga when they uh, met my family again in francis town some that couldn't attend the funeral we had to meet again in uh, francis town in town we met we ate uh, we laughed uh, we chatted but because we still had another funeral in the family because my mom lost her sister as well soon after i landed in botswana the funeral arrangement is still ongoing um i still don't know when she's going to be buried maybe i will be able again to drive back to tutume for her burial but if not because i still have got some days in botswana if not guys 
I'll keep you updating you. Like now, I'm back in Gaberon. We drove back from Francistown to Gaberon. So I'm Gaberon now. i uh, still meeting my family and doing my work. I do have meetings lined up for me in Botswana. So I'm doing that right now. I just adjusted my work schedule. So I'm doing what I need to do in Botswana and Gaberon. So I'm working um, in my motherland and I'm um, having fun. I'll keep updating you guys. I'll keep recording this and um, let you know what's happening. So this is 25 minutes, 8 seconds. Uh, I wanted to do 30 minutes, but guys, Guys, it's very tough for me because I'm recording myself and I'm talking at the same time. So guys, yeah, this is it. This is where I am. Um, yeah, it's very nice. It's very beautiful. I'm going to be taking different scenes of where I will be as I will be driving. I do some recordings of the highways on my way to and from uh, Botswana. So I do have a lot of editing to do and a lot of videos. But for now, guys, it's ciao. My hand is tired from holding the phone and recording at the same time. I love you guys. Hope you are keeping well. Pick if those that are new to my channel, please subscribe and follow me. I love you guys. God bless. I'm out. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you.